Yeah, I'm uh, Shark Whitebeard, and here we are at Shark's Tavern making another video. Basically, what I want to talk about today is the pirate society and the subculture that they basically made for themselves. Uh, basically, what you had was the pirate code, and basically based on a set of articles, a ship's articles or a crew articles that you signed in blood, you signed on to be a part of a crew to be on this pirate ship. Basically, the articles were a bill of rights. Uh, the pirates had been abused and not treated very well by people in authority, and they weren't. They didn't really. They didn't really didn't want to uh, put themselves under the uh, authority of somebody else, where they felt that they could be exploited and abused again by somebody else in authority. So what they did was they had a bill of rights, which were the ship's articles, and they would sign on voluntarily to sign on to become part of the crew. Um, what the uh, what the Bill of Rights, the articles covered were division of plunder, the division of power, and basically it addressed a health care compensation system. So when they plundered a ship, if, if somebody lost a hand, an eye, or a leg, it stated a, they get a bigger percentage to compensate them for their loss in the attack, whatever. So here you go was an article set up to be fair to everybody and treat them right and they wouldn't be exploited by the people in power. Basically, the division of power, you had the captain, you had the quartermaster, and the bosun mate. All three of these positions were voted in, okay? So the pirates would get together, they vote in who they wanted to be the captain, the quartermaster, and the bosun mate. The quartermaster ran the ship and had authority over the, the crew up until the point where they're going to attack a ship, they would vote on it. They see a ship out there, and they say, "Okay, we're going to attack this. Uh, we're going to attack this ship." So, and they vote, and then the captain would have power during the attack, and um, up until the attack, through the attack, and then after, he would relinquish control back to the quartermaster. So, and at any one time, these people could be held accountable by the crew and, and call for a vote, and they could throw them out of that position if they weren't happy with what went on. The bosun mate was the most trusted member of the crew, and if you had a grievance with the captain or quartermaster as a regular pirate, what you would do is you would uh, take your grievance to the bosun mate, and then he would take it to the captain and quartermaster, and the three of them would kind of figure out what, what they would do about this or, or what course of action. They, um, the crew, they had crew rules in the articles that they signed. Uh, it had enlisted punishments for if you did something wrong or against the rules. So you were told up front this is what they expected. Some and a lot of them they would they would tell you what would happen to you, like they'd cut your drop your grog ration if you broke a rule. They cut your 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 food, or they could cut uh, they could have you flogged for doing something. A lot of times you could ask for a a crew vote to see what happened to you when you did something. They had to have some kind of form of discipline in form of. Uh, way to, uh, you know, to, to function like that and had to have a chain of command. But what it was, it was an attempt at, at democracy. It was an attempt at egalitarianism. So everybody who signed on had an equal say in what was going on as, as everyone else. They had a, a vote like everyone else. It didn't matter if you're a person of color. It didn't matter where you came from, your nationality. When you signed on the crew, you had the rights as, as everybody else. You, uh, and and it was an attempt at a healthcare system to try to compensate people who got injured or, or whatever on, in the attacks. And they did this by division of power and a uh, bill of rights. Just what other democracies that followed after that, they kind of did the same thing. Basically, the pirates were violent men and women who were in rebellion to society. The society they felt that they didn't have really have a stake in and they really didn't have a fair shake in. So they were in rebellion and their goal was to achieve riches and a leisure life with using those riches to, to give them a leisure life, just like um, most people at the time or any time, even nowadays. And they were trying to achieve the, this the fastest way they could, and they were trying to do this um, by any means possible with violence or the threat of violence. In history, what I've seen is that groups that are disenfranchised and exploited, what do they usually do is they usually try to find a group lower than them to exploit and take advantage of, if you look at history. 
Uh, the pirates, on the other hand, they were basically turned around and they were trying to exploit and take advantage of the society and the tyrants and the people in authority, basically the have against the have nots, that they felt were exploiting them. So they were trying to turn it around and make these people pay and make them finance their freedom and their leisure time and their, and their riches and wealth. So I kind of feel like it's kind of a different situation than most things in history. And I, you know, kind of, kind of feel for them and kind of try to put myself in their, in their mindset and see how they were thinking and how they wound up where they were and how they figured they were going to get their self out of this. So that's pretty much my take on pirate society and subculture.